welcome back to the farmhouse. Today I'm going to take you along with me as we do some summer smoking on the Traeger, a little bit of sourdough chocolate cake, and a little bit of spice cabinet organization. I hope you enjoy this episode and that it gives you a little bit of inspiration for your own home. Okay, so this is a three to four pound sirloin tip roast. I don't know exactly the poundage because I get it from the butcher and they don't put that on there, but they do cut all my roasts three to four pounds. So it's a three to four pound sirloin tip roast. I am using four small cloves of garlic, which would be like two large cloves of garlic. And then to a small bowl, I am adding one and a half teaspoons of smoked paprika, one and a half teaspoons of salt, one and a half teaspoons of onion powder, one and a half teaspoons of thyme leaves, and a teaspoon and a half of dried sage. And then, of course, it's a teaspoon and a half of salt and a teaspoon and a half of pepper. I am just going to drizzle my roast with a little bit of olive oil to help keep it moist in the smoker and to help all those yummy spices stick to it. And then I am going to mix together all my spices in my little bowl and I am going to rub this sirloin tip roast with all these yummy spices. It might sound like it's a lot of spices, but remember, it's only the outside of the roast that's getting the spices, and this will flavor the entire roast. So when you bite into it, it's not overly flavored. And also, I am smoking this, and I am using a smoked paprika. So this is a really smoky flavor, and in fact, my daughter said it smelled like bacon when I brought it in the house. So I'm just pressing those spices onto the roast as good as I can on all different, all the sides of this roast and making sure that it adheres to it really well. And then I am going to go preheat my pellet smoker to 225 degrees Fahrenheit and let that heat up while this is just soaking in all the flavors from all these yummy spices. Once your Traeger gets up to 225 degrees, or your smoker, any, any smoker, pellet smoker, that gets up to 225 degrees, I am putting this on the top rack because the top rack gets more smoke than the bottom rack. The smoke kind of sits there at the top. I'm showing you this to know how, how long it took me. I put it in the Traeger at 11.40. And it was finished at five o'clock, so it took about five and a half hours. In these pretty flower baskets, if you remember, I got a few episodes back at the nursery and they're looking so beautiful. All right, so this Traeger has been smoking this sirloin tip roast for about five and a half hours and I'm gonna wrap it in aluminum foil and let it rest for 30 minutes before I slice it. A lot of people think that a roast like this would get dried out after smoking for five and a half hours at 225 degrees, but it is nice and so perfectly moist. It's actually cooked to 145 degrees Fahrenheit. And so this is a well done roast. It's not well done, but it's pink inside. And you're gonna think it might be rare, but it is cooked all the way, I promise you. I did cook it by temperature with an instant reach thermometer to 145 degrees. The pink color comes from the smoke and from the smoked paprika. So the smoked paprika and the smoke work together. You're gonna see it's very pink, but it is cooked all the way. It is still very tender and moist inside, but it is cooked all the way and it's very delicious. So if you have a smoker or a grill, this is highly, I highly recommend this. After it has rested for about 30 minutes, you slice it thin and against the grain and you can see that it is nice and juicy inside. It looks very pink, but it is well done.
now I am going to get started on this super moist chocolate sourdough cake that I am topping with ganache. This is a super simple recipe. It's two cups of all-purpose flour, two cups of sugar, a teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of salt, a half a, a half a cup, I'm sorry, of cream, a couple of eggs, one cup of melted butter, a cup of water, and five tablespoons of unsweetened Hershey's cocoa powder, and then a half a cup of sourdough starter. It can be fed or unfed starter or sourdough discard. Either one will work with this recipe. It does have a reaction with the baking soda that helps to make this cake rise very nicely. So first I just add all the dry ingredients to my bowl, give those a good stir till they're all well combined, and then I just add all the wet ingredients to my bowl. The last ingredient I add is the one cup of water and give that a really good stir. I am using just a Danish whisk and my bowl. You can most definitely do this with a hand blender or an electric mixer uh, or in your kitchen aid. Anyway, it works just as good. And once you get it all stirred up, it's okay if there's a few little lumps left here and there, you're just going to pour it into a prepared nine by 13 casserole or rectangle rectangular baking dish and I am preparing mine by buttering it but you can also line it with parchment paper or dust it with flour any way would work so I'm just adding now my half a cup of starter to this and then I will add my one cup of melted butter yes it is a lot of butter and it is delicious and it is worth it just don't eat too much my husband's having a birthday on Monday, and every once in a while, it's okay to enjoy your chocolate. So I'm going to give this a really good stir. I'm still going to add my one cup of water to this, and it will actually be a pretty runny cake. It is not thick after you add the water. It's a nice consistency to pour into your baking dish. This is my spice cabinet and I do have a lot of spices because I do a lot of barbecuing, grilling, I cook a lot of meats and so I have a ton of spices and I did get a bamboo spice rack and I bought a whole bunch of very small mason jars to combine all of my different spices together and today I found these really cute old bar and ball antique jars and so I have had this huge container of garlic that's really ugly and I am going to put it into a pretty antique ball mason jar and just label that and add that to my seasoning cabinet here and it just makes it much nicer when you can see everything in your cupboard you know where all your spices are and you don't have to dig through them and this cute little jar I am going to fill with black peppercorns I love grinding fresh black pepper instead of just using the the really small ground up black pepper, but it just gives you a nice, nice flavor. But this little jar is super cute. I will label it and add this to my spice cabinet and it will be in arm's reach where I'll be able to get to it really easily. So this cabinet has been, we have been working on this for a few days now.
Okay, I'm going to make a chocolate ganache. I am using semi-sweet chocolate chips and then I am using cream. And you can use milk chocolate if you like. I like dark chocolate, but if your family doesn't like dark chocolate, you might want to go with a milk chocolate chips. Two cups of chocolate chips, one cup of cream. I am just using my regular pots in a mixing bowl to kind of create a double boiler here and cook these. And I will pour this ganache over this chocolate cake while it is still hot right out of the oven. And that's the beauty of this type of a frosting is you don't have to wait for your cake to cool. And then it also helps keep the cake extra moist by holding in all that steam so the steam from your cake doesn't escape. My husband's birthday is on Monday every year. He asks for a German chocolate cake. And so I am going to use this sourdough chocolate cake recipe to make his German chocolate cake. And of course, I'll frost that with the coconut pecan frosting, which you can also put on top of your cake while it's hot right out of the oven. And it also helps to hold in the moisture in your cake. I'm just going to serve this. My kids are waiting anxiously and show you a few pictures of what the cake looks like after it's cut and the crumb. If there's one kind of cake I don't like, it is dry cake. And this is most definitely not a dry cake. It is a very moist chocolate cake. And it has that depth of flavor that that sourdough starter gives it. The ganache frosting just helps to hold in all that moisture. And if you are looking for a moist chocolate cake recipe, I highly recommend this. And I will link these recipes in the description below. As always, thank you so much for watching my video. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. And we'll see you next time.